I'm the elected chief of the people of the White Earth. Uh, we are located in the northwest corner of the Sub Nation. Uh, I've been working in emergency management now uh, since 2017, 18, during the fires and the floods that happened. Um, but what you consider an emergency in, in my community is not what the province uh, would constitute as an emergency because we're a remote community. These are emergencies for us because uh, we are a remote community that still rely heavily on harvesting uh, the animals and harvesting salmon uh, for food resources. Um, indigenous knowledge is, is not something that, that we take lightly. Uh, for example, um, as, as a matriarch, the matriarchs know the culture and traditions on what to do with children. So we have to rely heavily on them. And uh, when, when we talk about the family atmosphere and the matriarchs, that, that knowledge needs to be kept and uh, followed. Um, I'm just trying to figure out where to start. You know, uh, from 2017 to 2022, you know, we had, um, during COVID, during the fires and the floods, our, our roads were, you know, a lot of them were washed out. If there were, if there was going to be ambulatory care, it'd have to be uh, air. That was the only way you could get in and out. Um, so roads is a is one of the biggest issues for access. Um, the second is uh, because we were evacuated and because we were on lockdown, we really uh, couldn't develop our infrastructure further, and the cost of living out of community is staggering compared to uh, what they have in, in their own homes, you know. Um, so I think developing that and creating creating a process uh, for that, I think is, is a need. Um, when we talk about the capacity within the community, uh, that we need so many, so many things in our community. It's, you know, you can, you can pull straws, basically. Well, what we're getting right is, is we're our inherent community thinking. You know, it's one for all, not, not all for one. And that's where we get it right. With all that we've been through, what would you say is the one thing that really sticks with you that's marked your soul? Like I say, no matter what, no matter the traumas we've been through, you know, that community mindness, mindedness, that's what always sticks. Build the morale in other communities when they come to us with our culture and knowledge, like how can we help folks understand the power and significance of our presence? We just make sure that we're on an even keel, you know, we we treat them as we would treat our family and we just let them know that we're there for them and and can help out in any way we can. The one thing I noticed is um, how some people really changed coming through the emergencies we've been through, especially in a community. Mm -hmm. Like It shifts your inner being and I see that they're struggling with that with mental health and emotional supports and I just don't really know how to fix that. We just gotta, you know, just realize we have a lot of partners out there that's willing to help too. And we just need to get those partnerships um, done at the early part of the crisis as quickly as we can. You know, with, with um, Red Cross and with other um, agencies and organizations. Um, 
We need to load them at the top on how to treat our people, what they need, the care that they need, and, and the extra time maybe to explain things, you know, to our elders or to disabled people. Mentoring in our communities, how important and relevant is that with emergency management? So important. Mentoring is, is the way to teach. It's always been our way to teach. We've always had, you know, the three generation families or four generation families, you know, of our grandparents, great grandparents, our parents and our children. And each generation is used to help in a certain way. That's always been there. And we just need to learn how to project that to our partners that we work with. <clears throat> you have the, you know, the background teachings of, of, of your parents and of your grandparents and, and all your relatives. They know, you know, within our matriarchal society that you're ready to take this on. And you know that. And so we just let you march forward. This is um, a big burden. It is a huge burden. I know I've cried over that in my young years. Very veterans' hearts. We went to war in this country against something we couldn't see or feel or touch. And we had to battle through a lot of unknowns. And that battle wasn't just with the environment. It was also with um, people that were caught in a state of ignorance that didn't understand. A lot of time people don't understand that the government is just a framework to, to help find solutions, but they're not to provide those solutions. It's still up to the public and the contributors in society to come with those solutions and to be forward focused in how do we manage and mitigate these situations as they arise because that work of many can't be done by a few. We need to be a part of the management on our lands. We need that to be there at the table in full force with all the knowledge that we do have. This is our homeland. This, this here where we are standing on, it's, we've, my family's been here 11,000 years. Like it's documented, it's recorded, it's real, it's scientific. And so I hear you. Yep, it's true. We have, we have a lot of people that have been hurt through all the traumas you know, since the residential school and settlers colonization. And we have those people that we need to, to help and heal and nurture. But also, you know, there's, there's the people that the grandparents have looked after and nurtured and made, made us strong, made us the speakers, made us the thinkers, the strategic thinkers, the people that need to be at those tables and to fight as hard as we can. When showing up in one of our communities, I always take a look at, first off, who's the decision-making authority? What does that look like? It differs for each of our communities. Some are still with elected officials. Some are over to an EOC director. Um, there's an, an approach to try and align that for more harmony. Show up with respect and gratitude for the help that we're able to provide. I don't think a lot of folks really realize we operate as little municipalities and we have a significant amount of resources in house, right? Like commercial kitchens, schools, health centers, forestry offices, treaty mapping. And that was a big learning curve for a lot of folks that had first come into our communities to realize how technology advanced us in quite a way that uh, allowed us to be absolute equals at the table when it comes down to being a backup when their systems were failing. There's a lot of stakeholders that like the information to be upfront and readily available during an emergency so that they have some reliance on that. And then the communications, how quick and efficient can we get that out and make sure that it's written in a way that uh, our community membership understands. Like not everybody's going to read an atmospheric report or a weather index or a snow shed report, we're responsible for translating that information so that it becomes something that um, a common person would understand. Hello world, wake me up to another good, good morning, time to go. Got that smile upon my face, cause there's excitement in the chase, this I know. Yeah, I'm going for the ride, and by myself I am alive, and I saw. Still I run towards the wind, and let the challenge draw me in, cause I want more. Oh, we are all.
passing day, there's more calling you out, out to explore. Get up and go. There is joy found in the race, and I feel it in the place where I'm free. And I simply can't deny it that I feel adventure calling out to me. Yeah, we are all alone. I'm living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be. Living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be. I'm living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be free. Meant to be free. The best thing is is the celebration afterwards. Once we came home, we celebrated that uh, you know we did lose one elder, but we celebrated for that elder. We celebrated that we as a community survived, and that uh, the matriarchs were a big part of that celebration. <laughs>